eta grad stands for adaptive gradient. Here's the idea. So we have an optimizer. We want to use different learning rates for different parameters based on historically what's happened. So the thought is, if we've had a history of large gradients, and if we've had a history of smaller or few gradients, then we may want a higher learning rate. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to have some sort of master learning rate, and then we're going to have a specific learning rate for each parameter, right? So we have for each data, for each i, that is, in each parameter i in theta, we have a learning rate i. And that learning rate is going to depend on the history of the gradients for that parameter. So we're going to define this as some capital lambda, which is some uh, hyperparameter still. And we are going to go ahead and divide that by the square root of the sum of the gradients. So we're going to take the gradient, we're going to take this, and we're going to go ahead and square it. And we're going to take the sum from j equals 1 to t. So we're really looking at not just the learning rate for i, we're looking at the learning rate for i at a given time t. And we're going to say, again, is that some absolute constant divided by the sum of squares, the square root of the sum of squares of gradients. Okay? From the beginning of time, I guess the beginning of time, let's say the beginning of time starts at zero, up to t. First thing we're going to do here, we're going to, and just to be clear, the square root, that is this whole summation, we're going to add some value here, some epsilon, just so we can never have a denominator that is a zero. So for example, if we have some gradients, so at time zero, um, well, let's just look at time one. So at time one, because that's going to be really when we have our first gradient. So we'll make this time one. So at time one, let's say our gradient is one, then we're going to have lambda over epsilon plus one, right? One squared, square root is one. Okay, let's say at step time step two, we have no gradient. Our learning rate is gonna remain the same. Right? Now let's say we have at step, time step three a gradient of one again, then our sum of square gradients is going to be two times the, minus the square root, or two, we'll take the square root, so now we have square root uh, lambda over epsilon plus square root of two. And if we now have, I don't know, let's say a five, then lambda over the square root, lambda over epsilon plus the square root of 1 squared, 1 squared, 5 squared, so 27. So what happens, again, is if we have had not many updates to a parameter, then we're going to have a higher learning rate. If we've had a lot of updates to our parameter, or high gradients, then we're going to have a lower learning rate. So if we look again at the situation where we have a very shallow gradient for one parameter, and we'll have a much higher learning rate than for a different parameter with higher gradients. So if we look at time t here and look at some particular lambda sub i and what happens over there, what happens is the learning rate starts high and can never increase. So it can stay constant or it can go down, but it's always decreasing over time. Because this summation 
can only get bigger over time. And therefore, the denominator can only get bigger, so the total fraction can only get smaller. What we're going to look at now, and so the problem really is, we, have, we are looking at our entire history back to the beginning. Maybe what matters more is the recent history. So we shouldn't actually look back at everything in the past. So let's look at RMS prop. So RMS prop is basically a to grad with an exponential moving average. So instead of calculating this calculation of, a, of an overall average from the beginning of time, we use an exponential moving average. So RMS stands for root mean squared. So the idea is we go ahead and have, let's say, some e. So we're going to go ahead and create an exponential moving average of the square gradient. So e is going to be that exponential moving average. We're going to go ahead and use some gamma times e. Gamma, of course, is another hyperparameter as is capital lambda. And then this is going to be plus 1 minus gamma times the squared gradient. Note that the gradient is a vector again. Uh, its length is the number of parameters that we have. So e is such a vector as well. And now let's go ahead and calculate our lambda, which will be such a vector as well. So it's going to be equal to our single fixed constant capital lambda divided by some epsilon plus square root of e. And then we will use that learning rate. So we can say something like theta equals theta minus times Our gradient. However, unlike the normal stochastic descent update, we have lambda, a single value getting broadcast across this whole vector. Instead, lambda is now a vector of individual learning rates for each parameter, and so we're doing this element-wise multiplication of each element of lambda times each element of the gradient. So this way, some of the thetas are going to be updating much more quickly than other thetas based on the learning rate, which is based on the recent history. So if we are looking at eta grad, eta grad is using the entire history where it's all weighted equally. The RMS prop uses instead the recent history. And really that's not quite true. It's using the entire history, but since we are exponentially uh, weighting it, it cares about the recent history more, right? So the one step ago, let's, let's say that gamma is 0.9, the, the squared gradient from one step ago, we have a 0.9 factor. The squared gradient from two steps ago, we have a 0.81 factor. The squared gradient from three steps ago has a gamma to the third factor, and again to the fourth and get the fifth. So if we look back some large number, there are gamma to that large number basically makes that vanishingly small. So exponentially weighted where we care more about the recent history, here equally weighted where we care about the entire history. And it makes sense to care about the recent history uh, and not the entire history because as we're updating all of these thetas, our whole landscape changes and what our gradient is changes and and what has happened. So we don't want to be penalized for something that has happened in the past. We want to have some sort of a uh, amnesty, right? If we, uh, you know, committed some indiscretion seven years ago, let's say, uh, it makes sense that we can no longer be prosecuted for that. Same thing if we had a bunch of large gradients way back in our history, we shouldn't be penalized for that now.